this meeting to order. It's 530. Uh, do we have any changes or additions? We have one addition. It's to appoint a select board chair to finalize the town manager contract. Select a uh, point select board chair to finalize contract. Yeah, what we'll do is um, just authorize the select board chair to work directly with the, LC yeah. the VLCT consultant to finalize any manager contract okay. for a final approval by the select board. That's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, we have minutes from the 18th of March. I'll move to accept the minutes of March 18, 2024. So I have a motion to accept the minutes. I wasn't here, so I'm not going to do it. I'll second. We have a second. Do we have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of approving the minutes from the 18th of March? Aye. 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 And I'm going to abstain because I was not here. So that's 4401. Didn't George just say he was in the I wasn't he, so he, he did say I, but I did say I, but I can I can go in the abstention just as easy. Yeah, there are a lot of talks that are going to be going on tomorrow at the meeting. It's a choice. Okay. So okay. if you want to, then you have a choice. Uh, uh, we'll let it stand. Yes, I know, I know. Okay. Thanks, George. Okay, new business. So number one, uh, number one is the addition to appoint the select board chair to finalize the contract, and uh, this is the contract for the. Town manager that we are currently in the process of, of hiring. Correct. And Sarah can speak to this a little more if you'd like. <clears throat> Thank you, Sarah. So yeah, I'm just going to share on behalf of you know Dominic. This is just we're we're not at that place yet to finalize, but um, just trying to be proactive that if and when we get to that place, the motion will already have been approved that the select board chair can um, negotiate with VLCT to finalize a contract. Okay, great. Then I am happy to do this. So, so I would move to authorize the select board chair to work directly with VLCT consultant to finalize manager contract for approval, final approval by the select board. I'll second that. So we have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 That would be unanimous, Judy. Thank you. Uh, Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. So I'm looking for a motion to go into liquor and tobacco. Are we going to talk about April, um, 15th. April 15th? So I board meeting. I contract? skipped over that, didn't I? I'm sorry. Thank you very much. So let's do that. So April 15th, um, we do have a conflict in here. The 16th is election day, and I know the town clerk, Sarah, would like to have this room. So. The suggestion is to move the next select board meeting, which is normally on the third Monday, to the fourth Monday, which would be the 22nd. So, so I, I would make the motion to move the uh, select board meeting to April 22nd at 530. I have a motion. I'll second. Okay. So I have a motion and a second. Motion by Chris and a second by Laura. Discussion. Okay, so all those in favor of moving the next uh, select board meeting from April 15th to April 22nd, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous, Judy. Okay, now if we can move into the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. So I would move to recess the select board meeting and open as the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. I have a motion. I have a second by George, a motion by Chris. We have... Uh, Usually we take these separately, I believe. So liquor licenses first. Yeah. We so I, Sarah, can. I, I have a question. Yeah. That's that. Well, we had a motion and a second. We need to go yeah, on. Oh. Yeah. I am jumping so, ahead okay. here. All those in favor of moving into liquor and tobacco control? Aye. 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 Thank you, Chris. That would be unanimous. So, so we have, so far you're passing. <laughs> Um, we have a number of liquor licenses. Yes. Do you want me to present or do you want to ask a question first? George? Whatever the chair wants. Go ahead. 
Copper Golf Corp is listed, and I would say again, because I think the last time we voted on them, which is just two meetings ago, they had a third class and an outside consumption. So I'm just wanting clarification on why we're now a first, why they're looking for a first class. I can I can answer that. Okay. Thank so you. Um, this it's a new system where um, when people renew or apply for their license, they have to apply through a portal directly to the state of Vermont that I can then access um, and then approve through it once you've approved. Um, so they had they had a in time for the last and I just do them as what appears on the portal. So at the time of your meeting last meeting, they'd only applied for their third class and their outside consumption. I emailed them and said, all right, it's on the agenda because they're on the portal, but you still need to do your first class. So then they since then have applied for their first class. Thank you. Okay. Mm, absolutely. So so there are various renewals. Uh, Copley Golf Course is doing the um, renewing their first class. Green Mountain Distillers has an outside consumption. Rock Art Brewery has first class and outside consumption. River Arts has a first class. CVS has a second class. Green Mountain Distillers has only an outside consumption. And Pizza on Main has a first class and an outside consumption liquor license renewal okay so green mountain distilleries is on here twice oh, okay. once as an llc and once not oh that's a mistake thing? on my part yeah it's just once the llc so strike the uh second Set, strike the second one okay okay so we have six let me make sure it wasn't supposed to be somebody else and, Are you and good with that before we go with the motion? Sarah, if, with this motion, because these are renewals, uh, is it all right if we wrap in a new light liquor license for the Vermont Pizza Boys doing business as hoagies? Because that's a new. Typically, we've done the new ones separately okay. from the renewals. Okay. okay. I would make okay. a motion then. Okay, no. so we, it's okay. We have a motion by Chris to accept the renewals. As presented, yeah. Second. Second by George. Uh, um, Jason, are we good with all these? Yes, we are. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of accepting the six liquor license renewals as presented, say aye. 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 aye that would be unanimous. Tobacco renewals. None, None. this week. The liquor um, license new. So we have one new, it's, I don't think it's really new, it's for Hoagies, but um, they're doing it under a new corporation. They're now the Vermont Pizza Boys. I forget what it was before. So because they've, they've changed the corporation name, they have to apply as if it's a new um, license. Yeah. So I would make that, I would make the motion to uh, accept the, uh, First class third class license for Vermont Pizza Boys doing business as hobbies. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second that. We have a second by Richard, motion by Chris. Further discussion? So, Jason, this is probably for you, but this, wouldn't this just be a transfer? But they have to actually. Yeah, yeah. It, does, yeah it doesn't come through. Okay. Yeah. Just curious. It's yeah. It's basically all the information, but they start the process again. Jason, any concerns about this? Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of uh, accepting the license, uh, liquor, <coughs> liquor license for Vermont Pizza Boys, say aye. 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 We'll be unanimous, Judy. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to come out of the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. So I'd move to adjourn the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control meeting. I have a motion. Second. Second by Laura. Discussion? All those in favor of coming out of the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control, say aye. 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 And I'd move to reconvene the select board. I would move to re reconvene the select board meeting. And we have a motion to reconvene the select board meeting. Second. Second by George. All those in favor of reconvening? Aye. aye. And that would be. Thanks, sir. Unanimous as well. Thank you, Sarah. 
Number three, discuss the S100 Homes Act related to zoning changes. Todd? Good evening, everyone. So I think in your package you all have the uh, zoning updates. And I've got a couple of zoning maps here for. And Todd, just before you get going, just to, for clarification purposes, this is uh, this right now is information for the select board. We're not going to be acting on this. We're not going to be taking any. There's no motions needed to There's no motions needed. It's more, this is an opportunity for the board to give me or the planning council, the chairs here, to feedback on any showstoppers you think there are with the zoning change. I have to warn the zoning change by the end of next week. And there will be a public hearing in the future? Yeah. And May, then it'll come back to the select board right, again? May 14th is the planning council public hearing, and the select board one will probably be... Uh, I would say your second meeting in June, depending on months, right? I can't see the June calendar because uh, it's there, but probably the second meeting in June is when you can put that to me. Yeah, I mean, June 17th is your public hearing. So, in order to keep this on track, which keeps the select board's request for the town plan on track, we're trying to work for May 28th. We're trying to figure out if any showstoppers now and it's only changed. So, we know if we can warn maybe we should. Go back and recalibrate things before we want to change. You can't do things, you can't do both at the same time. So, and is um, your plan tonight, Todd, to go through all these changes? Just I, identify I all these changes. Ones in the yellow highlight. Uh, I want to start with the zoning map first and to give you a, bro a broader perspective. This is probably the biggest zoning change this town has seen since I did the downtown zoning change in 2011. This is probably more impactful because it's a much broader zoning change. So, if you want, if you want to pull these apart and look. Separately with the 2023 zoning map for 2024, you'll see that it's greatly reduced in size. Our area zone for development. So our area zone rural residential agricultural are going to increase pretty dramatically by the zoning change. And uh, the zoning map, the whole rubric for our zoning regulation is simpler. Uh, for example, medium density residential is gone, it's low density residential, and that gets into the building lots required by S100. On the bigger picture for S100, S100 is the Homes Act, Housing Opportunities Made for Everyone. The legislature passed it last year. And what that did to me is single family zoning illegal. So the town can no longer say uh, one house per parcel. So in the town, under this law, it's two houses per parcel. And the village is four houses per parcel minimum. We can't restrict it anymore. So we're responding to the zoning change with these regulations. So um, everywhere in the town, uh, you're going to see instead of the two builders acres lot size we have now, where the planning council is proposing three builders acres lot size. So uh, to kind of offset the increased residential population of the town far away from our services, we may not want that population, they're looking to make the lot size bigger. We realize that's probably the most controversial change in this. Uh, the second, the, uh, the other, other side of the corner- Before massive. you jump, yeah, just since you brought that up. So this is in the, the rural agricultural- Now you're the town, yes. Right. So, from suggestion is to go from two to three acres. Two builder and just three builders acres, yes. It's yes. a slight difference between the, uh, the measurements. So, 120,000 square feet is the new minimum lot size in the town. Yeah. So, so it's a 50% increase. Okay. It's a big increase. Just a little less than three acres, actually, right? Correct. Yes. And so they, but also the single home, so three acres, they still can build uh, two duplexes, right? Uh, two, uh, two units, a duplex or a single family home up in the town. In the village, they can build quads uh, okay. if they don't change the zoning as we're proposing uh, this spring. Okay. So the other side of the coin to the large lot size in the town is it's much smaller lot size in the village. So instead of introducing multifamily uses to neighborhoods like Favorite Parkway or Jersey Way um, or Foss Street, for example, that's not used to having such uh, apartments, uh, four unit buildings in it, we're proposing is meeting the state's minimum density requirement. The minimum density requirement is five units per acre or 8,000 square foot lots. If we introduce 8,000 square foot lot maximums, you can avoid the multifamily use and keep it single family only. So in the village, you're going to see 8,000 square foot lot maximums, single family uses for the outskirts of the village. So in the, on the map here in the 2024 map, all the areas outside the uh, all the areas kind of far edge of the village in yellow, that's where we're going to see the 8,000 square foot lot size. We'll continue with the same uh, zoning regulations in the downtown and high density residential on the whole, 
uh, with some minor tweaks, but the big changes are RRA from two builders acres to three builders acres, and the yellow from uh, the existing lot size now, which is partly medium density, partly low to 8,000 square foot maximums. Most of changes, Todd, are changes that are outside the S100, is that correct? No, that's for that's for, that's dealing with S100. That's but good. going from two acre to uh, uh, three acre. That is outside. Lot. That's outside. That is outside. outside. The planning council has been pretty good over the years at trying to direct direct new development into the village, utilizing existing roads, uh, sewer, uh, water, infrastructure where needed. So S100 is basically, if everyone was going to do it, doubling the density up in the town. Uh, the planning council is worried about that. So that's why they're doing a larger minimum lot size and no longer allowing minimum lot size waivers on the town by the zoning change. So in the village, when you're talking about 8,000 square that's foot. S100. That's S100. That's right. S100. Right. I just needed that distinction. Thanks. No problem. Todd, yes, just George. help me. Welcome, help, thank you. Help me catch up. So in the low density regions, the yellow, yep. what was the square footage now for lots? Uh, it depends on water and sewer connection, but let's assume both have village water and sewer, 10,000. So it's going from 10,000 uh, down to 8,000. Okay, so it's a deep. But that's a maximum. That was a 10,000 minimum. This is 8,000 maximum. So to help put okay. some perspective on it, if you've seen the houses that Jane and Nate Barber are building on the corner of uh, Elmore Street and Demars Road, mm -hmm. those are 10,000 square foot lots, so they're slightly bigger than what we're proposing as maximum small houses. So what that change is going to drive are smaller houses on smaller lots, which in theory is uh, more inventory, more affordability. But only within the village. But only within the village, yes. And is that because of that's because of sewer and water primarily? Correct, yes, exactly. And it's a mandate by the state. Mandate by the state. This is the state taking away your local control. Uh, so other than the lot sizes, which are really the big ticket items here, uh, the one of the ways that this, the planning council is dealing with the uh, the S100 regulations, they're dealing with how things look in the village and what the density is. So one of the big changes, for example, is uh, if you drive out Jersey Heights, not to pick on the new development, but going to anyway, if you look at the new Gordon Lane development, it's much bigger and uh, massing wise, taller than the neighborhood. And one of the changes here ensures that any new development basically fits into the neighborhood in terms of scale. It's no, not bigger than 60 feet long, it's not bigger than 150% 150, 150 of the depth of the two surrounding uh, structures. So really the intent here is to regulate the scale. And no matter what's kind of in the building, try to make sure make sure the form fits into the host neighborhood. That's another big part of the zoning change. So and that was one, something that you talked about a lot at the meeting just earlier, well, last week. Is that the 206? Yeah, this is, yeah every, every, basically everything here is 206 besides a larger lot size in town, which is a, re, which is a reaction at 206. So it's indirectly 206. Everything else here is 206. So, so 206, 1, and 2 are the big, big changes. Correct. So let's go down to page uh, to section 454. Uh, for example, the DRB has a bunch of additional uh, abilities right now to increase parking requirements and increase lot, increase lot size. It's still now legal. Uh, the DRB, for example, can't require more than one parking space for a dwelling unit. It doesn't matter if the dwelling unit has eight bedrooms on parking space. That's the state legislature. Uh, scooting down to page six, uh, section 635, uh, kind of the same thing there, more DRB mitigation tools are off the table. And for the 770, building height of building one too. We talked a lot about that at the last meeting. So right now, the legislature, oh, it's Tom, of course it's Tom. Got a sentence clear? Right, getting out of time, don't worry about it. I know. Uh, so building height's a big one too. Well, part of S100, it basically says affordable housing developments can violate your height maximums in town. Can violate, can go above, one story above the existing height. So right now, our height in the downtown, for example, where we sit, is uh, 50 feet to the midpoint of the roof line. So right now, we're completely open to a developer putting up a 65 foot building, which is arguably one story above, that we potentially couldn't uh, guarantee life safety with, a, with our existing fire apparatus. A new ladder truck's about $1.8 million. So until we get the zoning through, we're on the potential hook for buying a ladder truck for development that we can't actually guarantee life safety to. Believe it or not, we've gone through town council. Yes, they can go above our height limitation and uh, we're on the hook for ladder truck. So what this zoning change does is because of S100, which is meant to increase affordable housing, unfortunately, due to the fact we don't want to buy a ladder truck, we have to reduce our building height town-wide. So right now, town-wide, we're going from 35, uh, we're going from 50 feet 
to 45 feet in the downtown and the commercial zones, and another 10 foot less in the residential zones as well. So basically, town wide, we're reducing by 10 feet to uh, protect us and not put the taxpayers from off chance we get an affordable housing development and go one story above our height maximum, so we're not hooked on the ladder truck. So I, I have a question about this. Yes. And I was thinking again, the meeting Tuesday night, the new LHP building Yes. over here, when you're measuring this 35 or 50 or 65 feet, are you, where are you measuring from? Are you measuring from the lowest point on, on the building or the highest point on the building at elevation? It's, uh, neither. It's the average elevation. So in that one, you're splitting the difference between Hutchins Street and the bottom of grade at Call it Portland Street, whatever it is at the back, Portland Street kind of railroad street elevation to the midpoint of the roof line. So that's the way we measure it. It's always measured in this town from average elevation to the midpoint of the roof line. Okay. And right now, so uh, that building is 50 feet. That's our maximum. Right now, that same developer could do a 65 foot building that we can't serve. So it's very important we get these regulations on the books quickly, reduce our height by the one story. So if we get something that's one story taller, we're not hooking a lot of drugs. So the new regulations would allow a building like that? Would allow an affordable housing building like that, but not a regular housing. The rest of us have to live with regular lower limits by a story to compensate for the fact we may get a affordable housing project that's one story above our height limitation. So we all have to build shorter because of the, the possibility of an, uh, another building like that being a story taller. What section is addressing that? Huh? Uh, that is section, uh, that's in the building height definition. So it says section 770. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, part of S100, we have new definitions of served by water and sewer. That's where you have to have the, uh, the smaller lot sizes. Also in your emergency shelter, we had a very long and tumultuous town zoning update in 2013 regarding homeless shelters. And we went through a long process and had a pretty good community result of coming to a resolution about what we wanted to allow, how we wanted to allow it. We do allow shelters, they have to be staffed 24 seven. They have to have, uh, the people can't be under substance. We need to, um, uh, they can't, they're supposed to not be under any kind of substance when in the shelter, and they're supposed to be 24 hour seven, 24 seven staff. Unfortunately, that regular, those regulations are gone and now illegal. Basically, the state is basically protecting any kind of emergency shelter, including a wet shelter, which is supposed at the time, and we can't say no anymore. So that part of our zone is gone as well. And uh, the other important part of this, the last part on here under, under the last highlighted part, is our sewer service management area. As you see in the new 2024 zoning map, that's the dark blue line around the map. That's much smaller. What this means is, for example, if we have something in the SSMA now, let's say something up towards the Elvin's property, which is the uh, property 100 with the circular stone walls, the gravity for the pool stone walls. We get it. Right now, we have no control over our zoning. The developers control our zoning until we pass this zoning change. If a developer wants to run a sewer line to any property in town that's in our existing SSMA, they can do 400 buildings there right now. We have an application tomorrow, 400 buildings out by towards the elements, for example. With this new zoning change, we greatly restrict the area, the source of this management area, to where we get a gravity sewer line to, so we can prevent that from happening. So we're at risk right now of uh, a development being in a far fun place where it doesn't belong because of the sewer line extension, because basically the developers control zoning of the sewer line. Once we establish a new SSMA with a zoning update, we control the sewer line again. So that will be, if all goes according to plan and there's no showstoppers in this with uh, the select board, and I present the same thing for the trustees Wednesday night, on May 23rd, your warning on May 23rd is the date the new zoning was effective until you either deny it or approve it. So I can rezone under both the old and the regs. So plan is right now, the planning council holds its here on the 14th. We've done this a bunch. They approved it on the 14th. It's advertised in the newspaper the following week on the 23rd. The 23rd is when we get these safeguards for the smaller SSMA, the smaller building types, and so we don't buy a new ladder truck. All those things are a pretty good rush to protect our taxpayers. 14th of May. 14th of May is the hearing. The 23rd is when this becomes effective. This one, yeah. I just yeah. wanted to be clear it was May. So the, uh, for the 14th of May, I have to warn this hearing by uh, next week. So you don't have the next meeting in the select board to act as a body and get back to the concerns. I mean, individually, if you have any concerns, you think you're a showstopper, if you say, Richard says, you know what, I'm not gonna vote for, I'm just thinking, I'm not gonna this conversation. I'm not gonna vote for three years up in town. It makes a lot too expensive. Let me know if that's a showstopper. And if I hear from a couple of people, the planning council will take it under advisement and they still have the ability to change these at their next meeting, which is next Tuesday on the 9th. On the 9th, they're gonna basically bless what I want, I want it later that week. So I'll warn them. The 9th is when they're gonna approve something, approve 
this in form. I want it, and then we go to the hearing, and then it comes to you, comes to you in June when it's live on the 23rd. Um, how does the uh, three acre affect the uh, conservation? The we talk about when they had a big section of land, they could build on one acre and put the other half in conservation. How so does basically that the, it's basically the acre and a half now, or the till yeah. there's acre and a half. Yeah, everything up is up 50%. Yeah, so the intent is to not to keep the population in the village. We have the existing services and keep it out of the far flung places of town. That's the reason why they're looking to try to offset some of the potential population gain. But that's why I was going to drive out in the far reaches of Morristown. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, any showstoppers, anything you really have concerns about, questions about, let me know. Let Etienne know. You can add anything he wants. Um, and I'll take it to the Planning Council on the 9th, and they're going to warn the zoning change appropriately. And, uh, I'll warn the zoning change appropriately later that week. You'll hear it on the 14th, and uh, that will be live on May 23rd. And the point of this processes, you've asked us to speed, speed this up, we're going as fast as possible. This will allow us to get all jump on board and keep this on track. We'll want the town plan here in May 28. So you'll have the town plan after this, the uh, zoning in June, build the town plan in July. So Todd, I'm trying to keep track of all these dates. So it's pretty obvious what we're doing tonight on 1st of April. Uh, just informational. Yep meeting with the select board and then on Wednesday you're going to do the same thing with the trustees correct on the 9th the last time the planning council can change something the 9th of April next week uh before their hearing I warned this on the 12th the planning council they have the hearing on uh they have the hearing on 14th the 14th of May and in theory they could change something in May but they can't add something new they can leave something on the table they can say we're passing everything but this one thing they could pass everything but the large lot size, for example. The 23rd, it goes live, you said? 23rd, it's live. Remember, the select board can't add anything. You're not the planning body. They are. What you mm -hmm. can do is leave things on the table as well. So I just like I said, cutting room floor. You can edit the movie, but you can't add scenes to the movie. When's the select board public hearing? Well, it depends on what your schedule is. We have okay, to it's not set. But in the theory, it's, I'm going to actually work on it this week. Mm -hmm. uh, probably next week when Carrie's back. But in theory, you're going to be... Uh, 17th and 19th. 17th the select board for this first hearing, 19th for the trustees. 17th of May. 17th of June. 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 Yes, I'm warning in May. I'm warning in May. Planning Council is warned for May 14th. I can't warn it ahead of time. The Planning Council is presented, a proof is presented to you. So I warn it on the 16th. It shows up paper on the 23rd. The earliest I get in front of you is the 17th. So 17th of June is the select board public hearing. Yep. 19th will be the village. Correct, and then you have to, uh, you can't vote it at the hearing, it'll be your next regular meeting, so it'll be your next meeting in July. Okay. You can have time. And the same is true in the village as well. Correct. In the town plan, you have additional hearings the village doesn't have for your population, so you do differ on the village. You're not the same for zoning update. Uh, town plan is different than zoning update, so there's more hearings for the town plan. But this will allow us to move the town plan forward as well. Any questions? One more. Sorry. Page 11, the use table chart. Yes. It's P's and C's. And I'm sure there's an obvious answer to this, but I don't know if it is. What's a P and what's a C? The P is basically me, and the C is the GRB. So let's say you want to build a garage, George. It's yep. a permanent use in your zone. I can issue a permit for that as a zoning administrator at my, at my desk. C if it's a C, it means something that requires a DRB hearing. And generally, C is conditional use. C is for conditional. Okay. P is for permanent. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Happy help. That was the easiest question I'll be able to ask. Probably. I like the easy ones. Actually, do you want to add anything on this? No. No, okay. So Todd, there's a number of, this is I'm perhaps my last question, but there's a number of changes on here. And you've really just gone through a few of them. Uh, the big ones, the really impactful ones. Yes. So the others you would consider, in your opinion, to be minor, minor changes? Well, just minor. They're still, just have, they're still S100 related, not all, but most of them are, which the vast majority are. But the big ones are really the ones I had. Like, I want to make sure I touched on the last so the, tonight. Sorcerer's management area, building height, those are the big ones. So the so the what I just identified as minor ones are really just housekeeping issues more than Yeah, there's some. I mean there I mean like two oh six point three, for example. Um, that's a whole different development type that the planning council can allow in the village. It's not a um, it's not something that should be a showstopper. The planning council on an issue with that, we could leave it on, we could leave it and do it later. But basically what that allows is that allows the cottage court development. So you ever walked into or seen them? I'm sure you've seen them on TV or you've made it a, 
much smaller in Elrose, please. We will watch that show. You walk into the common courtyard, the housing around the courtyard, uh, generally single family homes. This would allow a handful of single family homes around the courtyard, 800 square feet max. And it's kind of like a, a single family use in the form of a multi family uh, lot because there are, in theory, four or five, three or five houses on a the lot. They're all even square feet or less, they're cottages, uh, but are all single family homes. It's another way to allow more affordable ownership or rental. Uh, living with, uh, without facing creating allowing a, a large lot with a large house on it. So, more affordable housing for people, smaller house, smaller footprint, something that's ideally could be tucked in the village somewhere, supporting uh, additional single family homes in the village. So, I think um, the next office residential zone is being delayed. Yeah, it's basically a Bishop Marshall only. So, if you look at oh, okay, go above Jason's head right here. So, that's like what I don't behind it, but. Uh, mixed office residential is right here. This is the village. This is Bishop Marshall. This is their development parcel, they called it. Uh, I've been in touch with uh, Harry Wilson, the principal over there. Um, I should, All Saints, I should apologize. I'm only Bishop Marshall. All Saints Academy. The uh, idea of people building business parks, what that is, it's usually a business office park zone, is found the way to Dodo. Uh, especially since COVID, no one builds business parks anymore. People work from home. Anyone who has business parks is trying to vacate their leases and work elsewhere. Yeah. So uh, what that does is replace business office zoning with uh, basically there's a basically takes it takes out the business use and still allows the residential use. Okay. She seems to think the board will be okay with that. The board hasn't acted on it yet, but the town controls it, not the board. But I'm, I'm not expecting. Okay. Yeah, I, think I, I think they're probably. I can't speak for the All Saints board, but they're not planning anything next week, next year, or next handful of years. I don't think they're. they're we're, we're looking to develop an office park surely, so I don't think they're really sad with that loss, especially if they can still do. If you look at the zoning, when it works out with the village zoning, if they drop water and sewer in there, um, actually, they outside. they're in the uh, sewer service management area. It's still the 236 houses, I think, in there if they wanted to, if they do the math on that. So they have more residential use than they'll probably ever use in there. So I don't think they're upset by the prospect of not doing a riskier business office park. I know I wouldn't find one personally. I don't think people lose right now. Any other questions, comments? I just want to say, Todd, that <clears throat> if you're looking for some feedback, the uh, three acre zoning is a real issue for me. I, um, you know, it's difficult enough for people who want to build uh, on have some land of their own. I think it's forcing people to um, pay an accelerated price for a larger acreage um, to try to incentivize people to build in the downtown. I think you can do both without increasing the acreage uh, outside the village, uh, in the residential zone. So if you're looking for feedback, um, just might as well lay the cards on the table. I have some serious concerns about that. That's the one I, th I thought we'd hear back about tonight. Do you want to speak to that, to that one, or the graders? Okay. Yeah, come on up. Um, <clears throat> Etienne Hancock, Planning Council. The, um, the response to that, of course, is that now uh, with the change from single family zoning in the RRA, we have no way to prevent the du uh, duplexes being built out in the rural areas of town. So for example, the, the example that came up during our meetings was that if someone has a 10 acre parcel, which there are quite a few of, they can now subdivide it into two acre parcels and put a duplex on each one. And suddenly that's, that's a rental property ownership situation out on the dirt road in the RA. That's not very controllable and not very desirable. Because it's also kind of extreme, I admit. But it is extreme, and I guess it's on the, in one uh, mind's eye too, in terms of what's acceptable and what's not. True. Yes, and as Todd mentioned earlier, um, we have taken a pretty uh, firm line on the village being the place for dense residential use, in particular rental use, and not out in the in the uh, outside of the village limits. How does do these zoning uh, changes um, 
affect a town plan because the town plan is the overview and the bylaws are what enforce the town plan. So is it compatible, I guess, with the town plan? I don't have a prepared answer for that, but my guess is it is it is comporting as well as it can be. We haven't proposed changes to the town plan per the S-100 law that was passed. Right, but if your town plan doesn't specifically speak to these kinds of changes, then we're sort of accelerating beyond what the purview of the town plan's overview is because the communities voted on a town plan that talks about development both inside the village and outside the village. Um, but now we're coming forth with bylaws that are becoming more restrictive. Um, I guess, is there, are we creating an incompatibility here and are we moving too quickly to, to propose these changes? I, I get the S100 piece, but the other pieces, I guess, I, I'm, I'm wondering about. The other piece meaning the three acre lot size right and there's some other uh, i think well specifically to that yeah yeah the three uh, basically the law was passed and it became live within how many months of no, weeks. weeks of and being passed, passed three went three weeks right after it so there's no review of the town plan that's occurred since the state passed this law that allows the use of duplexes throughout the town, right. regardless of whether or not it's an appropriate use. Todd has to write a permit. It's the law. I get so, that. So right now, no, we don't have a response in the town plan prepared for that. I believe not, I don't, I can't quote, but <clears throat> the town plan uh, speaks to trying to preserve the rural character, especially the rural agricultural character of that we've all grown up with around here. Um, putting uh, duplexes on small lots, I would argue, does not meet that criteria. Now, we can change that. Obviously, the Planning Council is responding to the rule that was passed just last July. And there was very little that we could do. But Morristown has one of the smallest lot size requirements outside of the village of any town around in northern Vermont. Most people have five acres and they have graduated uh, lot sizes throughout their town based on uh, regions, hills, uh, valleys, etc. proximity to the village. We don't have that. We just have a builders at two acre lot, which is very small. It's very generous. <clears throat> so we recognize that perhaps as Todd described, this is a bridge too far for the public and the, and the two government boards, and that's perfectly fine. It's really the reason we're here right now. Sure. It's just to solicit that feedback. I, I, I personally will go on, a, will, will state that I don't believe that duplexes in the RRA as rental properties, the way we see them in the village, comports with the town plan as we've written it today. Okay. I appreciate your opinion. I appreciate all the hard work that you folks are doing. And as we move to statewide zoning, which is this is where we're headed, um, because it continues to usurp local control. Um, I understand that that is always going to be you're going to be catching up in terms of the town plan because of the newness of S100. Um, I just you know you were looking for some feedback. I have some issues with the three acre zoning. Okay. I'm going to come in because I live near, I have to drive by the eight bedroom, five and a half baths. It's on 2.5 acres and it's horrific. You know, we have, we're in a neighborhood that's rural. It's right across from a huge cow field. And, you know, they, it's just, it, if that's what rural Vermont is going to, it's going to be horrible. And um, so, you know, again, the, uh, uh, so I'm for it, I understand. And because there is uh, the provision for, to conserve the land, there are options, there are viable options out there. Uh, you know, you can get it down to an acre and a half for single family. So I actually think you guys did a great job coming up with, because um, once we lose this, you know, the character, then we're just another, you know, so 
suburban town, which you know, most of us have moved here to get away from that. And if there's a loophole or something that can be exploited, that's what happens. And that's exactly, I drive by it every single day. And luckily it's un unoccupied, but it's gonna be a nightmare when, you know, it can house 16 people. You know, there's not parking, there's, you know, the road's not ready for it. Um, so I appreciate it. I think it's, I think it's good. Thank you. Thank you. I remember we only required one parking spot for that house. I know. Don't get it. Work. So the cows get out and raid the house. So any show starts, are there, is are there questions the from the board? I guess my only comment is, you know, there is quite a bit here and we've got a little bit of time to digest it, but there is plenty for the board to do in the next month or so to go through this and figure out what uh, what we might have questions and concerns about. If you want to add something to the list, the last chance to add it is on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday night when the planning council can approve it. If you want to delete something, you have until the 14th. So for example, if you're worried about the three acres and that's what you want to delete, we still have five weeks to delete that. But if you're worried trying to add something, time's ticket, so you can get it very much. Okay. Thank you, uh, Todd. Thank you. Okay, going on to old business. Do we have any old business? No. Uh, approve the warrants. I would make a motion to approve the warrants. I have a motion to approve the warrants. A second. I have a second from Richard. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the warrants? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous, Judy. Community comments. Hi, I'm Alex Sear. I live here in Morrisville. Um, I know in a previous meeting there was a public comment on adding more detail um, to the motions to move into executive session just to say what the meeting is about to the extent that you can without giving up the confidential information. I don't know how much you can or can't expand on those, but I want to support um, adding whatever information you can. Great, thank you. Duly noted. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. I just want to reiterate what Jamie Brewster said out there at the pit, and we need all eyes on deck what goes on in this town because to me, I see it every day. I travel quite a bit and it looks horrific in my eyes. And it's not just over there by the gravel pit. For a $3 million budget, we can do better. Thank you, Tony. Other comments? Okay, schedule. So we do have, uh, we have already approved tonight that the next select board meeting will not be April 15th, but it will be April 22nd at 530 here as usual. And Monday, May 6th at 430 will be the next charter committee meeting. And Monday, May 6th will be a select board meeting. Other business? I wonder if, as far as the schedule goes, the April 22nd, we will have the Oxbow on the agenda. Okay, good. Yeah. So the Oxbow discussion will happen on April 22nd. Other business? Done. I would take a motion to adjourn then. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. I got motion from Richard to adjourn. I have a second from Chris. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Happy Happy Christmas. Christmas. Oops, everybody. Six thirteen.